Well, it sort of opens the door to the the dreadful situation that you sometimes have with reviews, where you get a reviewer that's like looking for the books that you didn't write, but they wanted you to write, right? <laughs> <laughs> and and it's sort of like again, you don't have it in the book, but I kind of wondered, what about you have Italy, so you have a Latin country, but what about say Spain? We have, I think, two Carlos Wards in Spain. We have. A, a number of revolutions, like almost like five, every five years you have something happening in Colombia or in Peru or in Chile. Argentina is still struggling with coming up with its own identity. Wasn't it covered well in Southern newspapers? Was it because the U.S. kind of as an Anglo-centric country looked down on people in South America as kind of racially inferior? Why didn't they take more of a look more to Latin America too for inspiration of kind of how do you form nations or form their nationalism? Yeah, I think part of this, so part of the answer is Latin America wasn't absent. So there are times where Southerners are claiming, for example, that the South is fighting for rights and independence, just like Hungary, Ireland, and Latin America. So mm -hmm. um, they'll include it in kind of the litany and list of places that they claim they're fighting for independence, just like these places were. But I think part of what helps answer that question is chronological proximity. So a lot of these events that are happening in Europe are relatively more recent. The Latin American revolutions were relatively earlier. Um, so there's a chronological juxtaposition issue. For example, once Italy becomes an independent nation and succeeds in making its nationalist revolution um, successful, a lot of the focus turns to Italy because, of course, that's the example that's not only fresh on everyone's mind, but most successful. So I think that's part of the answer as well. Um, you know, at the end of the day, this was a book about European nationalist movements because that was what showed up the most. But certainly I think there's further work that could be done on comparisons with Latin American movements beyond the filibustering element that I explore. But I would also recommend here Caitlin Fitz's book, of course, um, Our Sister Republics, although a little bit earlier chronologically, does do a lot of the a lot of good work in terms of understanding how Americans did look at the revolutions in Latin America. And definitely something for the grad student listening. There's a book to be written right there. Absolutely. <laughs>